Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're talking a lot more about design and more importantly, how you can actually design websites that you can sell for thousands of dollars. There's a couple of very simple things that you yourself can follow in order to start producing websites that are on a similar level to the likes of Apple, Shopify and even Spotify. Now one thing that all of these websites have in common is that they have a consistent design style rolled out throughout. So what we're going to be doing in today's video is talking about style guides and I'm going to be sharing with you my own very simple style system that I implement with all of my website designs that allows me to sell them for thousands of dollars. Okay, before we get into this, let me just explain what a design system is. Essentially, a design system consists of a bunch of standards or UI components that clearly define the visual style of a website. By implementing a design system, a more cohesive and consistent design experience exists throughout the entire design, giving you not only a end product that looks fantastic, but actually it's very pleasing for the end user when they visit the website. Now, a lot of designers completely disregard implementing any sort of design system when they are putting together a design, no matter how simple basic it is you can end up with a website that looks very amateur now if you end up with a website that looks amateur then businesses are not going to pay you the type of money that you deserve for that website now remember design is a very subjective thing and despite how good or how great the the underlying back-end system of this website is if the design doesn't look great and it doesn't engage people and draw them in the website is going to be a failure so design is very very important not only in the sense of fixing real world problems that that business is having but actually on a visual level so that's what we're going to be talking about today we're going to be talking about design more on a visual level and how you can put together websites that you can sell for thousands of pounds or dollars i do have my screen recording just here you might be able to see it what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump into adobe xd in a minute and share with you a recent design that i've been putting together for one of our clients it has a very simple design system and i'm just going to talk you through that and how you can implement such a thing in your designs going forward but before we do that please do remember to hit subscribe hit the bell notification too if you haven't done so already and you will be notified of any future releases and also really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up it will help the youtube algorithm and other people to find this content now without further ado let's jump onto the screen okay so just move the camera so you can see me better but here we have adobe xd as you can see and there's not really a lot going on here at the moment this is in its very basic stages we've only put the home page together but more importantly what i want to talk you through is this first slide here which is our initial design system okay so in this design system one second i'm just going to remove the guides so in this design system it's broken down into different elements we've got colors so here is a collection of brand related colors for this client that we want to roll out into the website so we've got dark colors and then we've got a primary green and then we've got lighter shades of that and then underneath we've got a light gray and then we've got lighter shades which is their secondary color this is to be used in contrast with the green and you should you'll notice this throughout the design when i show you it so we've got brand colors at the top and then we've also got text colors now because we are in adobe xd one thing that we can do which is awesome is we can add all of these colors to our asset library over on the left so if there's any elements on the page that we want to uh, use that color we can just click it and for example you know that would change to green so that's a really really cool from a, a really really cool tool from adobe xd and if for whatever reason you wanted to change these colors maybe the brand changed their colors or you didn't have something quite right we can literally just come into here and click edit and we can change that color and that's going to change that color throughout everything that that color has been applied to within this design so yeah little side note adobe xd is really really cool for supporting you with your design system so that covers colors next the next important thing that we have to cover is typography okay so typography is so so important when it comes to web design and we've got here we have a series of title fonts so we've got our large main top level heading okay so what we're doing here is defining heading and then we're just outputting what those heading variables are so we've got our font the font size the font weight the letter spacing for this font and we've got the three values here and again here which signify desktop tablet and mobile okay so when your website becomes responsive we want the sizes of our headings to scale and change okay we don't want to be displaying a 50 pixel size heading on a mobile device so we're just reducing that there so it's setting out those rules before we even jump into the design okay and then the same thing applies with the secondary heading the medium heading 
and we've got a small heading as well, okay, with all of the valuables output. This then brings us on to the body fonts. So this up here is the heading fonts, and down here we have output the types of body fonts that we want to include in this design as well. So we've got our main body font. The font is Courier. The size is 18 on desktop, also on tablet. And you can see on mobile, we want the font size to reduce ever so slightly, okay? We've got slight decrease in letter spacing throughout, and our line height is set at 1.6. All right, so we are just setting out all of the rules and principles for our body font. And then we've got what we call a pre-header or sub-tag that we're gonna use in the body as well. And we just outline the font vari variables for that as well. Okay, let me come back up here. Now the next important bit is UI elements. Now UI elements are gonna be used throughout the entire design and it helps you create design consistency. So buttons are a very well used UI element with any web design. So we are gonna define what that button's gonna look like right here. So we've got our green button, this is our primary button, and then we've got a hover state next to it, okay? So two buttons, one is standard, one is hover, and we're just showing what that looks like. Okay, so this is our primary button. We're outlining what font is used, what sizes, weights, the background color of our button. So we've got our initial state color, and then we've got our hover state just here as well. And then we've got any borders that are used and any border radius. Okay, so we're just defining that style of the button. And then underneath we've got a secondary button, which is essentially the primary button, but we've just hollowed it out. And we've explained how we've done that in our design attributes. Now that covers buttons. Now underneath here, we've got a UI card. Within the design, we needed to uh, create a card. Now, just a slight caveat. This design card was actually produced within the design this side before it was added to the style guide, okay? So you can do that. You don't have to create all of your assets and elements within the style guide before you move over to the design. But what you must do is if you've created an asset or a UI element within the design, you need to immediately put that into your style system, okay? You need to include that in your system because then you know what that button or what that UI element is gonna look like throughout the rest of the design. It gives you a reference point. Now, moving down, spacing. This is by far the most important part of your style system or your website design system, okay? This is where I see a lot of web designers go wrong, all right? And spacing is so, so important. So we're talking about container spacing here. But before I just talk about this, I wanna just jump back up to buttons and talk about how important the spacing of buttons are as well. Right, so you can see here that we've got spacing at the top and the bottom of the button, which is our padding. And we also have spacing on the left and the right of the button, which is also our padding. Now you'll see that the spacing on the left and the right is slightly wider than the spacing on the top and the bottom. And that gives that button a nice sort of horizontal rectangle look, okay? You wouldn't want it the other way around. You wouldn't want short sides and tall top and bottom because that no longer would really look like a conventional web button. So. Whatever spacing you define within this button, you essentially want that to be consistent throughout every single button within your design. Now let's go down to spacing and talk about containers. So we've got two container widths here. We've got our large container, which is what we're defining as 1440 pixels, so 1440 pixels wide. And we've got our smaller container, which is any content that's gonna sit at a smaller width of 1080, okay? All right, so let's just look at the design and show you this. Now, first of all, I think this is wrong. I think it should be 1640 or 1660. Let me just check that. So what, what we do is I've turned guides back on and you see that this is the full width of our canvas. All of our content needs to sit within these columns. So that is 1640. So there is a very minor mistake in this system, which is okay. We've identified it and we have fixed it. So our main width is 1640. That is our largest container width. Nothing else can go wider than that. Nothing can sit in terms of its main content can sit outside here or outside here. You can see that we've got an image that is spilling outside of this container. Absolutely fine. Okay, and then underneath you can see here we've got one that is 1080. So if I just pull that in. Okay, 1080. So you can see that there is a two column width either side for any of our more narrower content. All right, and you can see examples of this just here. So our content is pushed in here by two columns, uh, but our image on the other hand is spilling out 
over onto the left hand side okay so that works absolutely fine and then we've got this piece here that is completely full width our 1640 width okay so that essentially covers our spacing in terms of widths All right now let's take a look at spacing in terms of padding at the top and the bottom of any of our elements all right so this is again very very important this is what creates consistency with your designs so what we're saying here is all of our containers need to have a 140 pixel padding at the top we'll have our content in the center and then at the bottom we need 140 pixels as well and that is on desktop so this is our desktop figure this is our tablet figure and this is our mobile figure all right so let's have a look at how that looks within our design so best thing you can do is for simple purposes as I'm just going to draw a shape and it is going to be 140 pixels high like so you can see here that it's 140 pixels width 140 pixels high the height is the most important bit okay so we now have our box you can see it it's white and it has our border on it okay so I'm just going to click and drag that there right now you can see that there is a space between this container and the image so this is our content this is where the content starts this is where the content ends so I'm going to take that as well I'm going to drag it down and you can see here that it's uh, in line with the end of our container so we have a consistent padding at the top and a consistent padding at the bottom if I bring this shape down here you can see that it's now in line with our font okay we've broken the rules here and we've pushed this image up to spill over into the previous container and um, that's absolutely fine okay it's it's not going to break our design system okay and then right at the bottom at the end of the button we've got consistency between the button and our next image okay and so on and so on okay we've got consistency here and we've got consistency there and so on and so on so you can see how important that consistent padding is all right now before we move on I wanted to just show you that we have a slim container padding option as well which is essentially more than half of our main padding uh, size so this is 60 pixels so to show you where this is being used we have a bar here which is what we are calling our slim container padding so I'm going to drag this down and I'm just going to show you if I make that 60 pixels high like so you can see that it's 60 pixels high creates that space there and it's 60 pixels at the bottom as well and our content is our button in this instance underneath okay so there you have it that is how you essentially create uh, sizing and pattern consistency throughout your design all right and you can see here that we have implemented all of our style guide colors we've got our greens this matches this green we've got our beige which matches the background color here which you can you can faintly see and so on and so on and we've got our dark color there which matches our dark color up here so everything is consistent throughout we've got consistency with our buttons we've got primary buttons we've got our secondary buttons and we have a very nice visually pleasing composition for this design so let me just and uh, turn off guides okay so there you go if I just hit the play button I'm not sure if you can see this all right and this is essentially top level how the website's looking and you can see that it's a very very nice looking website you know albeit not finished it's it's currently in the works but this is just a fine example of how we've implemented a design system within our designs and it really does allow you to produce stunning looking easy on the eye visual designs that people will pay thousands for so there you have it that's how you can implement a very simple design system into your designs and start designing some really high-end visual design compositions that you can sell for thousands of pounds remember guys there's a reason why the likes of apple and shopify and spotify have really really amazing website designs and it's because they follow a very robust design system like it will be a lot larger than what we spoke about today but this will give you the underlying principles that you should follow with your designs in order to create consistency throughout the entire website now i hope you found this valuable please do give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so already please remember to hit subscribe too i'd really appreciate that and hit the bell notification to be notified of any future releases there's loads of videos on this channel which are designed to help you improve your your web design business improve yourselves as a web designer find more clients and that sort of stuff so if that is interesting to you 
please do take a look at some of the other videos. Also, I do have a private Facebook group. It's all about building a six-figure web design business. If that is interesting to you, there is a link down below. There's tons of value in there and there's a community of like-minded people which you can just chat and just learn and share ideas with. So please do go and join that, answer all the questions and we will let you in on the other side. Now there's more videos coming up on the end screen which you'll find super, super useful. So go and check those out and I will see you in the next video. Bye.